The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, until and unless your thinking gets corrupted, you are walking a walk with faithfulness in truth for the fidelity of Christ. If you are not walking in faithfulness or in truth or in fidelity, then you meant to say your thinking has been corrupted. The thinking wherewith Lord God Almighty has appointed you as a believer in Christ and has given to you this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher in communicating the truth. The unjust steward went against the great disparity, what we can learn, in that the Lord and the steward had distinct particular or separate interests to carry on. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's interest is one, and his steward's was another. And while the steward sought to advance his own interest, he injured the master and prejudiced him. For while he made use of his master's good for his own profit, he could not in so doing add to his master's advantage, but the contrary he did. The same thing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all his servants have but one spiritual interest to manage and carry on in the world and whatever we do or can do truly tending to enrich our souls through the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in daily intake of Bible doctrine have to align with the mind of Christ. Not also he tend to advance Christ's interest and his glory, and that which he tends to Christ's honor and to the advancement of the interest cannot tend to enrich us, but rather to undo and ruin our souls. Therefore, dear brethren, the men of this world may times get riches and grow great in an unjust and unrighteous way, which our Lord condemned in Luke 16. But no person can get through to spiritual riches in an unjust way or by using any unlawful courses. It is a self-discipline. It is a day-by-day -day process. That's what the renovation of our thinking demands, the knowledge of Bible doctrine greater than ever before. And if it is not been done in the reality of the truth it is no way possible for them to understand what exactly it would mean for us to be in Christ therefore dear brethren why the truth has been perishing because the steward or the iconomos or the stewardship or the dispensation to be termed as the KJV he is not faithful to Jehovah that is what it is happening some are over much righteous denying themselves of the use of God's great creatures and neglecting the body under a pretense of righteousness and religion and this is to seek to be spiritually rich in an undue or unlawful way as the papists of a single life and their favors beg and go barefoot and moreover in our time where arose a sect that lived upon herbs and roots and would wear no woolen garments nor hats unless made of straw and all under the show of righteousness religion and self denial but these things being but a piece of voluntary humility and not condemned of god is the ready way to become miserable forever rather than to be purely truly spiritually rich and can no way tend to make men truly happy we are dear brethren, what we need to say. Even the friends, what we can know with the steward parable of the one made for himself was by his own craftiness and in an unrighteous way, meriting their friendship. But no man can anyway, no not by the highest acts of justice or mercy, merit anything of God or deserve his love and favor or procure his friendship. For all we are and have is the Lord's. And therefore, dear brethren, we need to note 
the friends of the tungsten steward were made for himself by his own craftiness and unrighteous way. Today, the pastor teacher also in the congregation makes such kind of unrighteous friends. Because if there is any voice that is rising against them to tell you're not teaching properly, then they will make up themselves friends in the craftiness and they try to devise plans against him and destroy the career of that guy who really raised that voice, telling that he is a false teacher, telling that he is a false pastor. If you would have been a pastor, you would have done this, you would have done that, so that the craftiness of this world may be. But if that guy stands firmly thinking that the friend is none other but his everlasting habitation in Christ and God to be his friend and friend of Christ, when he receives, when he fails, they will receive, that is fails means when he dies, they will receive them into an everlasting habitation or a dwelling place in heaven so that in this respect we consist at vast disparities. But if you deserve in the craftiness, what will happen? They have nothing, everything is in vanity. Therefore, dear brother, and what the word has been given in our hand, we need to faithfully handle it. Not follow into the mammoth of this world, which is nothing but evil snares and devils, which has been really seducing you not to tell the exegesis, isagogical, categorical explanation of the word through the dispensing technique of dispensations, but rather inducing you to know and alluring you and obscuring you from the truth. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to make very thorough, a very thorough of an account, very thorough of a justice, to make possible for us to be readily available to preach the word as it is and ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next step. I will cut short my sermons today because the wind is too strong. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and talent. Sovereign Lord, Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.